Hey, brothers and sisters. Uh, it's Halloween today, uh, so I figure I'd give the enemy a little treat by revealing what I found, what the Holy Spirit showed me, what uh, all this research, all this prayer, and all this study has been ultimately uh, leading me to. And, and first, I always like to start with, uh, you know, you have to begin thinking multi-dimensional, you know, not just one dimension. And we're so trained in this system to do that because they don't want us to think outside that. Our, our, like when I use the word person, like in the legal sense, the, the person. Well, if you look in the Bible, it's constantly said, God has no respect of persons, but man was made in his image. And Jesus was made in his express image. Well, in law, good law is express, not implied. So the person is our body is our is can also be the the belief part of us in a system in a society and that's what they've created they've created this whole society in the, in the 2D world where there's there's magistrates magus you know magus magi magistrates word magic um you know officers officers uh pol police police so, what they're essentially doing is bringing us down from a, a capacity, bringing us down in capacity into this 2D Rhea, reality, Rhea. And this is one of the most amazing things I found. And like I said, everything's been leading to this. Um, that most of us that study this should know about the Nephilim, right? The Nephilim, the, the giants. And again, what, what God showed me was the word meanings, how the words themselves have become weaponized. So the giants weren't just, the word giant doesn't just mean, you know, someone that's physically big. You know, you're a giant in capital, giant in finance, giant in uh, casting spells, giant in whatever. You know, it's just the giants in all these fields, the beasts of the fields, the giants in all these fields. Well, what they did is they created Nephilim languages, Nephilim hybrid languages. The flood happened, and within about 100 or 200 years in that time period, that's when the Tower of Babel occurred. And there's even verses about it, about, you know, in Zephaniah, I believe it's Zephaniah 6, Zephaniah 3, 9, where God tells us he's going to give us a pure language, where we can all uh, worship and, and with one consent. But within 100, 200 years, of the flood wiping out all the Nephilim the, and there's various ways I found that they survived the flood I've talked about that before um, but they when God came down at that point and separated the language he confounded the languages after the Tower of Babel because the people were so brainwashed with word meanings that they were assuming all these meanings from the word not realizing words have multiple meanings so within 100 to 200 years, the people had one voice. The people had one will, basically, again. So God had to confound the languages. So after that, they've been working, creating these hybrid languages, like English. English is one of the worst ones ever. It's, a, it's literally a bastard language. It's a hybrid language. It's a Nephilim language made up of uh, uh, Norse, made up of Latin, there's some Greek in there, uh, German, Germanic, it, and they do that to create these multiple meanings. So they can say things, and we assume what they're meaning. You know, we t so it's all by our own consent. Because as a man or a woman, no man or woman can ever tell another man or woman what he can or cannot do. We all know that, but we see it happen every day, and we don't. We just think that they're corrupt and controlling us that way. Remember, in the multi-dimensional world. They're, they're, they're across the Iron Cross, the Cross of Malta. In the 2D world, it's given the appearance, giving the color of a cross, of Christ, of Jesus. But in the 3D world, what is it really? You know, it's the pyramid without the capstone. And only entities in the same capacity in the same dimension 
can actually um, commerce or uh, what's the better word can intercourse with each other so you know a man can trade with a man or another woman you know man can trade with man man can deal with man but when a, a corporation steps up uh, like a fictitious entity could, man can never deal with that so he would have to come down in capacity to the person to the legal person so even when the angels the angels that sinned they had to they had to leave their first they had to leave their first estate and they also had to um, leave their habit they had to leave their form the whatever the fourth dimensional form is they had to leave that and come here as a third dimensional being and just as just as um, when the holy angels came here when they came to help what did they do they, they had to come in a third dimensional form to interact with the third dimension uh, and there may be loopholes in that or you know other ways there seems to be like all these loopholes and technicalities like the letter of the law versus spirit it's all it's all through the Bible again well the letter of the law is and and God tells us the letter killeth well the letter is how they're playing this word game you know like I said before thou shall not kill that would be perfect perfect law it's, it's simple it's expressed we know what it means but then the devil playing the letter, the word game, the letter of the law, thou, who's thou? I'm not thou, that's that's not who I am. Shall, future tense. Uh, okay, sometime in the future I shall not kill. You know what I mean? I can do what I want right now, do what thou will. So, that's the whole point of this knowledge of, of good and evil, is it's, it, it's just making anything and everything possible. You know, but it's only possible in this realm when God's going to judge the hearts and the intention of the hearts and the minds because he knows that what the intent was and even with uh, Adam and Eve um, well for the for the, any of the followers of the Luciferians or the the left hand path or what they want to call right hand whatever they want to call themselves just to let you know since uh, if any of you like to play this word game as well know that the devil's playing this word game with you because the serpent in the garden he didn't promise you to be like gods that wasn't the period at the end of that sentence there was a comma to be as gods knowing good and evil and knowing means to understand an agreement be liable for knowing so that's all happened in the garden is they were naked beforehand but they didn't know there was anything they didn't know there wasn't anything but naked. Like to know a straight line, you have to know a crooked line. To know uh, black is black, you have to know white. Like that's the whole point of this realm, of this arena, of this dimension, this tree that we've uh, entered into is our spirit comes in and enters one of these casts or one of these roles that we're to play. And it's literally bound we've bound ourselves here because of the blood of Adam and Eve and we're all you know blood relatives but we're bound in this game right now in this reality and the whole point of God coming in was he fulfilled he beat the game he beat the rules he beat the old contract the Old Testament which gave way for him to establish the New Testament the new contract he triumphed over death and hell he beat them so then he offered a new contract he fulfilled the old one so the new one is that we can merely claim our he's, he was came as one of us as one of our relatives as our kinsman redeemer so we could claim his blood his victory and all we had to do is believe you know and uh and and believe doesn't just mean you know like the devils and so they believe well i should say they know jesus exists believe when you actually look it up the etymology it means to love the whole dear they they don't believe in Jesus they might know he exists you know but they don't believe and I and it's funny the um there's actually even a goddess let me find it here this is my book that I'm still putting together it's like 1500 pages but her name was memnosign m n 
E M O S Y N E. She was a Titan goddess of memory and remembrance, and the inventress of language and words. And they say, uh, Memesine was also a goddess of time. What else? And she was the mother of the muses, which, you know, her and Zeus, Satan, Zeus, the mother and father of the muses, who the patron goddess of poets and the oral tradition. And what else? They said they also believe that Memnosine was sometimes named as one of the three elder muses, Musae, who preceded the nine daughters of Zeus as goddess of music. So if there was three original ones and Satan was able to obtain her one-third of them, is she part of the one-third that fell? And he used her to bring these abilities in to, to, to have power over time. Um, to have power over inventing languages for this purpose. And the memory, before I talked about how we come into this world as uh, babies, infants, we're in the, we're in the, uh, in the amniotic, amniotic sac that, with the amniotic fluid. Amnio comes from like amnesia and it literally means forgetfulness. And there's five rivers of the underworld, and one of them is about forgetfulness. So we have to drink of that, and then come here as a blank slate for a true trial, for a true test. And then for those on their side, they would pray to, I guess, Memnosine or Zeus or these muses to help them gain remembrance, and to help them come up with those in, you know the, that are using the languages and the words and this word game and this multi meaning and if, and if you're new and you don't know what the word game is it's it's kind of it's hard to explain but really you just need to start looking up some common words and read all the definitions because that's what they're doing um, they're double entendres you know why can't a bike stand up by itself but without a kickstand why can't it stand up by itself because it's too tired to talk, you know, they're playing on the multiple meanings of words and they're artists in this. So they developed languages that made this easier for them to even make it less ambiguous, to make or make it more ambiguous to not know what exactly the meaning they're using. So that when you, you know, you assume it means something, you're liable for it and they can just turn around since they're the author of it, you know, authority, author, that they can say, no, that's not what it meant. No, it really means this. Like, and that's exactly what they're doing in the courtrooms. And they're really, honestly, there are the public servants are using this ability through the spirit. And I'm sure most of them don't know it. They're just being guided by the spirit of this world, by these spirits. And that's what they're doing in the courtrooms. You know, legalese is a foreign language designed to look like English for deception. Just like, you know, the, the, the tares among the wheat. They look exactly like them they're really there to strangle and to kill all the wheat you know it's the same thing there it's a masquerade ball this place and they're just using their mask their persona their person to blend in among us to lead us in this direction and these public servants and just like the angels they were here to minister unto us to serve us and that's I believe is one of the major parts of the rebellion was they didn't want to serve us so they're showing how uh, how foolish we are by saying okay we'll serve them we'll give them exactly what they want like a bad genie um, you know a bad genie uh, I, I wish to uh, live forever okay you'll live forever but you'll be in excruciating pain every day of it you know what I mean you're not specific I, I want a million bucks again I like to use that one because it's easy to understand I, I wish for a million bucks well then a million male deer are dropped on your head and they trample you to death bucks you know, yeah, that that's the game they're playing. So we're using words we believe we know the meaning, like in a court case, suffer. You know, oh, I suffered because of the acts of that that uh, officer. Well, first of all, an officer is a is a is a is a what, not a who. You be have to go after the actual man or woman that did it. In the second dimension, it's all perfect. An officer is perfect in the second dimension. A third dimension, a man or a woman has to act as an officer. But, and they can do wrong. 
So, so the word suffer, if you said that, that could be thrown out right there because suffer literally means uh, you had the ability to stop something from happening, but you chose to allow it to happen. Like Jesus, he suffered on the cross. Why, did, why is that word true for Jesus? Because he could have stopped at any moment he wanted. Called, he could have called down legions of angels. He could have stopped it all. He could have made it so they couldn't put a hand on him. But he went through it to pay the price, to, to pay our debt, our sin, our trespass. Those are all the same words, trespass, sin, debt. Uh, debt and guilt, the same thing. Is it the German word the same as debt and guilt? So, literally all these fees and fines, they're, they're making us operate in a workspace system, paying for our salvation, paying, you know, for our sin. But who are we paying? You know, if we're of the God of this world, I guess we have to pay him and his, his agents collect. But once you believe in Christ, you're no longer accountable for that contract. You, that contract's fulfilled. You know, it's already been paid for. It's done. It, it's over with. But that's what the devil wants everyone to still believe in that Old Testament contract so that everyone's bound by that. That they'll be of the, the books, I believe it's of Revelation 2012, the other books were open. And that's where everyone's going to be judged, like how they have it in the underworld. You know, the scales, weighing your good deeds against your bad. And that's what people are going to... And, and honestly, good deed doesn't pay for a bad deed. You know what I mean? Like, if you've done something wrong, if you've stolen something, you can't say, well, I didn't steal something at this other store. That doesn't, you've still done wrong. That needs to be paid for, accounted for. And if you don't want to accept Jesus to your salvation, his blood as yours, as your property, or claim his blood, as opposed to the word complaint they always use in their nonsense in the, in the 2D world, a 3D word is claim. Only a man or woman can make it claim. So you'd be claiming his blood as yours, and that would literally pay the sin debt. Um, what else do we want to go over? Oh, it's funny. Even in uh, uh, the word assume is huge, because assume, I believe, comes from Assyrian and Sumerian. Assume. Uh, you can even read about the dark sentences uh, and speeches was in the wisdom of Solomon 8 verse chapter 8 verse 8 and uh, Daniel 8 23 talks about dark sentences they had the knowledge to cast these dark sentences well, well what's that it's the exact thing they're doing these dark sentences and these uh, the magic they're using in speeches and it's all this word game Jesus Christ is the word of God you know, we were all spoken into existence. We're all words, you know, in the image of God. Jesus is the express image, the express, exact, precise word of God. And we're trying to be like him. We're trying to be precise. We're trying to be exact. We're trying to be one with him. And then he's one with the Father. You know, he's our mediator. And that's set up like a court, too. You know, uh, and the true way a court would work is that you're supposed to speak to the, the clerk the court clerk and they would be the mediator and the court clerk is seated on the right hand of the magistrate well what we call the judge but it's really a magistrate and Jesus is sitting on the right hand so we have to go through him because he was in our capacity and then he is one with the father so he can communicate with the father and know us like when he says to those I never knew you I never knew you I was never liable for you I, I was never You've never claimed me. You, d you know what I mean? You didn't have that relationship where he can say he knew you and bear witness for you. Um, like I said, there's just so much to this. Uh, what else? Oh, okay. Um, funny, I wanted to throw a, a little trick-or-treat in here too about for my uh, fellow flat earthers um, you know the circle of the earth when you start looking up those type of words circle or uh, you know it'll, it'll have definitions for like stages a theater and a stage or you know like the pit the pit will as well it's the orchestra area um, like all these words have uh, person you know persona uh, the mask an actor wears on stage angel a financial backer of a political campaign or a dramatic production. 
or any any enterprise, but those were the two I gave specific examples for in the definitions. So this is like a play being played out while it's also a trial, while it's also a test, a trial, a scientific trial, a clinical trial. So it's all these things wrapped up into one. Um, let me see what else. Oh, for, for the flat earth, when they, the first assumption they rest on is the speed of light. And I talked about that in another video, but I wanted to actually explain it a little bit better was that they need the speed of light to be that number, to be this ridiculous number. So then they can say the stars and the planets, and the planets are the wandering stars, literally. Um, the wanderer planet stars that kept not their their estate that that went off course, basically, and uh, followed the dragon. But it is impossible. And I argued with some knucklehead about this before for two or three hours until he finally actually looked and then saw that I wasn't just making it up but then he instantly had an excuse about something he knew nothing about because of his belief and that's fine that's his belief he wants to believe whatever that's fine but they cannot time the one-way speed of light it's impossible anything they would use to do it needs to already know the speed of light so the very best they can do is Send a beam one way, have it bounce off something and come back, and then time how long it takes for the, the the full trip up and back, you know, the round trip. And then they divide by two. Well, common sense dictates that. First of all, you're sending it one way. It has to stop and then be redirected 180 degrees and come back. There's going to be some time in there. So for all we know, light is instantaneous. And then that that's... We're talking about starlight now, too. And now they have to do it with other types of light. And who's to say, if you're running that light through whatever type of medium, that it's not going to differ as well. So it's all kinds of assumptions they need to then gain all these other, you know, the sizes. And if the sun's that far away, well, to see it at this size, it would have to be so big. You know, it's all the building block. It's all the pyramid of assumptions based off that false cornerstone of assumption. Uh, false capstone of assumption and what else do we want oh another interesting piece of information I found too was um, like how this world is literally like that movie the village that we're using old technology there's things that are so far advanced because if you look at uh, something I think it was around the 1300s uh, it was Albertus Magnus he uh, he was the teacher of Thomas Aquinas, and this guy was a, was called a saint as well. And he made many crazy things. He was into all this occult, spiritual practice. And the one thing he made was a uh, a box, a square box, a cube, again. And you would use that. I I think it's basically what the movies Hellraiser shows us that to be like the portal, the tesseract, or whatever you want to call it. But he also made a, a talking head that could answer questions, like a computer head, and then spent the rest of his life, he was making a, what he even termed as an android, a robot, that had the ability to answer questions and talk and interact. And then some tales say St. Thomas destroyed it, saying it was of the devil. But this is 800 years ago? I think it was in the 1300s, 1200, 1200s. So if they had that technology from these spirits, these angels, to make an android, literally that word they cho he chose, android, then what do they really have? What's really around us, you know? You look up the word clone, even the word clone, it uh, has to do with a twig or an offshoot, a branch. Again, having, you know, Bible... Based thing, it's it's literally made with hands, as opposed to the temples not made with hands, like the temple the bodies that God makes, He designs. Well, now these temples are made of man, and that's why I think, of course, the Antichrist is going to be uh, in a clone body, probably of Jesus's. They used His blood, or uh, from the spear, from the shroud, or something. They used His blood to make a temple. 
like the temple of God. So that's how they're playing the letter, the letter, the word game, the letter of the law, and that's when the abomination of desolation is going to sit now, you know, in the temple where it ought not, because it will be literally sitting in Jesus's body. It won't be Jesus, but technically by the letter, yeah, it's Jesus's body. But again, this body, this temple is going to be made with hands, so it's not going to be the same. Uh. I go into all this stuff. I could talk for hours and all this, but it's just funny that even the word person, persona, um, comes from Persephone, Hades' wife, Hades, uh, the queen of hell. So again, we you start looking up all these different goddesses that these, you know, these gods, these false gods, these uh, fallen angels, you know, married or, you know, raped or had offspring with, they were only doing that to bring other entities, other children to help achieve their plan, to achieve their goal, or to obtain powers from them, you know? Like we saw with Enoch, the fallen angels, each one had specific uh, talents or attributes, and that's what the whole plan was, getting certain ones, the one-third part of everything, so that Satan could be like God. He was trying to be like the Most High and use all these different ones. So he's using his fellow brothers, the lower, the different classes of angels. He's using them. He's using people on, in this world, his children here and other people. He's using everyone to achieve what he wants, to be an equal to God. He doesn't want to be created. And that is a mind trip when you start thinking about that. I'm created. I'm, you know, I'm basically the thought of of God. He imagined me, he made me, and I'm created. That's, so that is a hard thing to wrap your heads around, and, and I get it. You know, your pride gets affected with that. And when you get past that, you know, it's always a struggle. All, all different parts is a trial and a struggle. But that's what it is. You know, you can't decide because you want something to be different that becomes true, you know. And that's what they're trying to do. Like again, the, the rea reality. They're making a, a mirror image reality on this world. And like I said, all these words have multiple meanings. You look. I'm telling you, you look up these words. You have. We have no idea what we're saying when we say things. You know, it can be twisted and convoluted so many different ways. You know, the the the, the safest way is to look at the roots of the words or use one syllable words. A, a, a magistrate even told that to someone that was operating in common law. He said. I highly recommend that if you want to use this common law or this, for this common law stuff to work, you stick with one syllable words, you know, because all of it can be manipulated. And English is the king of that language. It's, it's literally, you'll see scholars call it a bastard language. And the word bastard, like, uh, and, uh, is it Moses? Noah. A, a, it said, a bastard shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven or into the congregation. And at first, that may sound like what someone doesn't who have a uh, know who their father is. No, it, it, a bastard literally means a hybrid, a hybrid. That's what it means. And it says not until the tenth generation. And when was Noah? Noah was the tenth generation. So it was wiping out that those ten generations of nephilim of hybrids that infected everything and even with the UFOs they see insectoids they see reptilians they see these gray things these gray uh, body suits but why do they always look like something from here mixed with something else you know why, why don't they look completely different like something we've never seen before it always looks like a mixture of two at least two different things of this world because that's what it is this is all these pieces here these molecules or atoms you know Moloch 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 Molecules, uh, atom, uh, aten, atom, atom, like it, it's all the same sound. So everything here is like the Legos, just like the building blocks that they have to play with by the rule book. You know, so you can mix and match and try to create new things. It's not really a new thing, it's just new here. You know, trying to get the elements they need to create the weapons and the powers they wish for. And I think I, I may have found, at least in part, how um, how the how a lot of people would say the reptilians or how they're blurring our vision. Like once you start studying about the eye too, it's amazing. Like 
you know, the eye is just basically a sensor that can detect a very small portion of light and then it sends it to the brain to decode. And then the brain tells you what it is. But if it's outside that field, the beast of the field range of you being able to figure out what it is or your eyes to pick up that light, you know, if it's infrared or, you know, ultraviolet or, you know, x-ray, if it's above or beyond, you know, and that's what I think it means about, you know, higher and lower levels of light, you know, when it bring down or, you know, ascend up, you're going to a higher frequency or a lower frequency. The devil carries around his pitchfork. Well, it's not an instrument to bail hay with. It's a tuning fork, a pitch fork for frequency vibration to manipulate our minds with reality. Um, so they're literally blinding us, our ears, our eyes, but I think one of the main ways they're doing it is, in the Bible it talks all about, you know, eating food sacrificed unto idols. Well, I had just found this, so I doubt I'm even going to finish this drink, but if you look up the, the kosher tax, you'll see things like on the top of a Pepsi cap, I don't know if you can see it, that tiny little K up there, that means it was blessed by a rabbi for all these foods and I and, and literally like these stores like Walmart and stuff won't put things on the shelf unless they have this little K or this little U. There's a bunch of different symbols and that tells you what company actually does it. Now less than a million people in this country could care less about kosher food. But why must it be all kosher? All these products like even like tin foil and toilet paper because anything that you know again the word game oh if you don't finish the food you're going to wrap it up in uh, reynolds wrap or aluminum or uh, a, a ziploc bag it's going to touch the food so that has to be blessed too well it's being sacrificed unto idols i talked to this one woman after i found this out and i knew she worked at a bakery and i knew they supplied walmart and she said oh yeah the rabbis come in they blessed they blessed the machinery and if we send a uh, uh, thing of rolls over there and it doesn't have the symbol on it not only do they send it back but we have to destroy them and send over new ones that are so why is it so important to have this kosher symbol this co this kosher mark mark of the beast this kosher you know signature on everything you know again it's one way I think they're literally placing uh, these blinders on us and, and we wonder why these people can't see it. it's not that they're stupid the people around us because at one point we didn't see it either but it's that they're literally being blinded by the spirits of this world in different ways you know through the TVs through you know but I think the food is a big one I think that's also why we are told to fast and pray is because we're cleaning that system out of our out of our uh, that, that stuff out of our body we're getting that away and we can we can hear God's frequency a little clearer. We can communicate with Him better, you know. Um, and everything goes back to the law, the whole Bible. That's why, again, I, the King James has been shown to me from day one before I even knew there was an issue about, you know, people that fought back and forth. Is because law, good law, has to be expressed. You can't change if you change a word, it's no longer the same thing. So that's why the mark of the beast were God's creation. But if you change one thing about us, alter us in any way, genetically, we're no longer the same thing. You know what I mean? We're a new creation. The same thing, when we get the Holy Spirit, we become a new creation of God. You know, it's, you're altering it, like a contract. You know, if who, whoever signs the contract last, whoever puts the last mark on it, is liable for the whole thing. Whoever signs at the bottom, you know, the last, the last, that's why the signature is always at the very bottom, especially if you're making entering a contract, intercoursing with a second dimension being like a, a company. There, your signature is almost always going to be the last one because you're bearing all liability for it. And a little bonus again: these these district district means uh, restraining of offenders. That's literally what it means. That's why, like in the Hunger Games, they're all districts. That's why we have been broken down into districts and a county. Same thing. Well, who's over a county? A count. You know what I mean? Like, we're not in a county. We're not in a district. When you say you're in it, you're part of it. Your legal person is in it. And then you're claiming to be that legal person. So by your own claim, that's creating the joinder or shortyship. They're presuming all these things, but they're using these small words. Like, uh, I'm going to court. 
you know, you're going to a courthouse. Or when people talk about church. Church? No. Church isn't a building. Church is the people. You know, court is the people. And the, what the paperwork they bring in. They're the people. The courthouse. The church house. You know, that's different. You're not, you don't want to be in someone's court. Like the Alice in Wonderland with the, with the, with the Queen of Hearts. Alice was in her court. So the, ching, the queen could do whatever she wanted. That's why she could cheat and lie. She went into there and she was making her her queen, her judge over her. But we're all kings and queens here. And even we want to believe in a country, but this land, land and people are the same. This land is a common law land. And that means whatever you believe. You know, as long as you don't actually cause harm or injury to another man or woman, you haven't broken a law. You may have uh, <laughs> what they call violated, which physically mean which means physically to put something into something violate a code well uh, I found this from Carl Lentz and I found it from another person to verify I can't find it anywhere in writing but I'm gonna try calling I think the Secretary of State and uh, the the state attorney um, the, the state attorney general the man who acts as that um, to find this out Congress makes public law and somewhere along and that'll be thousands of pages and then somehow it gets modified codified into this little code two or three sentences with these tricky words like person and shall and all the, that fun stuff so who makes it into the code because somewhere in that original law that's literally enrolled in parchment and held with the capital it's gonna have somewhere in there that you've only broken the law is if you if someone can show harm, injury, or loss. Like, if there's no harm, injury, or loss, wh what have you done wrong? Nothing. And they'll say, if you ask, have I done something wrong? No, you haven't done anything wrong. You, you violated a code. You intercoursed with a code. So that's what you're being brought in. And it's not even the code writer. It's someone else just saying what they think the code means. And I mean, you can... It, believe me, it's all by our own consent. Everything in this world is by our own consent. Um, I think that's it. I'm running out of time. Uh, again, the Nephilim languages is their main weapon. The Nephilim, the hybrid languages. They've done that intentionally. If you want to look up Memnosyne, M-N-E-M-O-S-Y-N-E. -E. She was the, you know, the goddess of remembrance and memory and inventing language and words. So there's even precedent set for what I, I've been being shown this whole way, that everything they're doing is by words. God bless you all, and have a great day, guys. And again... I've been trying to get this out the best I can. It's my mission. Like I said, I got this book. It's like 1,500 pages. I'm still trying to edit it. I don't know how to really do this. I'm just figuring it out as I go. Um, and I'd love to just get it out there and put it on uh, a popular website or start a website. I, I don't know how to do these things. I'm trying to figure it all out. But I got a very busy schedule, a lot on my plate. Um, so if you can help me get this out and learn this and pass it on, check out Carl Lentz for the common law portion. That's amazing information. K A R L L E N T Z. Um, and have a blessed day, guys. Thank you.